Coffee works both as a bit of a prop and sort of a security blanket because otherwise my hands are just doing, I don't know what they're doing. Hello everyone, this is the first video in a series of videos I'm doing on this. This is a slope wheel. It is essentially a DIY one wheel kit. You order it, it comes to you in pieces, and assuming you put it together properly, you have a one wheeled skateboard type of vehicle that you have made yourself. It's a bit complex, it is certainly a project, but it is a project that is very doable for most people who are either DIY oriented or a little bit handy with tools. So in this series, I'm gonna take you through me putting this together, me configuring it, and a little bit of riding this, as well as near the end of the series, an actual review on this kit itself and basically what it means to the one wheel landscape and a growing community of people that are changing how these things come together. And at the end of this, when I'm done with this float wheel, I'm going to send it off and do a bit of a pass around. And some people around the DIY community are gonna have a chance to play with this wheel, work on configuring it, build things for it, do things that I cannot do, and hopefully set in motion uh, another path to more options for those of us who build, those of us who ride, and those of us who want more options than just what's out there available right now. It's important to understand a few things before we get started. A one wheel is a self-balancing electric skateboard, and it doesn't function all that differently than other PEVs, really. Fundamentally, something like this works off of a battery feeding power into a motor controller that sends the power into the motor. In an electric skateboard, the motor controller gets its input from a remote. In a one wheel shaped board, the motor controller gets its input from a balancing circuit. It senses angles and movements and uses that to control the motor, which then does everything from keeping you balanced to moving you along. Electric unicycles are fundamentally the same. What we have here is a battery into a motor controller into a motor. This motor controller is based on an open source project called VESC, and you can configure it to work any way you want it to within certain parameters. It has a balance circuit and you can configure that in the software. The code for the balance circuit was actually written by a gentleman named Mitch Lustig, and you can find him and his tutorials here on YouTube. I'll link to that below. It's really interesting stuff and it explains a lot about how these systems work. This is all good to keep in mind because the float wheel isn't the only game in town. There's also the Fungineer's Fun Wheel, which has been around a bit longer, and now there's a growing community of people who are working on replacing one wheel internals with VESC based parts in order to be able to configure them however one would want. I, fortunately, am one of these people. This year is going to see some interesting things for this type of PEV. Anyway, on to the build. So this first video in the series is going to end up being a bit of a video clip salad. As I put the board together, I essentially went along with the assembly video that's posted to the Float Wheel YouTube channel, making sure I didn't break anything and occasionally recording a clip whenever I hit a snag or came across something I thought needed attention or some kind of caution. That's essentially what the clips in this video are from. Keep in mind that even after building the thing, there were a few things that I ended up not documenting. If you take a look in the link in the description to my blog article, you'll likely find it updated with things that I didn't get on video, as well as commentary on the kit itself as I shape out my review. Also, this kit was provided to me free of charge for review and content production. That was back when the float wheel guys were active on the Discord server, but I personally haven't heard back from them since about mid-January. If any of this changes, I will update the description and pin a new comment on this video, so stay tuned as this series progresses. Now the rails are very well made, uh, but internally, uh, externally they're very well finished. Internally they're not perfectly finished. And so where you have screw holes in the rail, you do have some artifacts of the screw hole drilling and tapping, and those need to be addressed before you thread wiring through. There were some hanging pieces of aluminum in there, and that was not a good thing. When I removed the main power cable, there were some slices in the silicone jacketing of the wire. Now I desoldered, not this one, I desoldered this end, took the connector off, and fixed all that on the wire. It didn't cut through to the actual strands inside the wire, but there were some scratches and slices in it, so I just covered all that over with heat shrink tubing and then re-soldered that back together and 
that's fine now. As far as the inside of the rails, I basically knocked down all the sharps that I could on the inside on both rails, and it's just a matter of sticking something down the rail that can flatten out and take away the sharp edges and protruding little bits that are in there, the artifacts and whatnot. And here we are making some progress. Uh, I did a bit of custom wiring because I'm building my own pack for this, which probably wouldn't apply to you if you just got the entire kit. But the point of this clip is to just make sure you know that this back plate, the bottom, a little bit hard to convince into the slot in the rails, especially because by the time you put the axle bolts into the rail, uh, these might not be exactly even. One might be off by a few degrees from the other, so keeping them actually level between one another will help. But this plate took a bit of convincing with a mallet and then some manual convincing to get the screw holes underneath to line up, so be aware of that. Uh, a mallet would help. I wouldn't use a hammer because it's aluminum, but a rubber mallet was quite helpful. So you've got the charge port and the power button over there, and you will have wires coming on top of them into the front compartment. So I've just added two layers of captain tape on top just to kind of take the edge off of those threads for each port. The 3D printed barrier, spacer, whatever, the front one is a massive pain. The one on the rear is easy, it slides in, you screw it down, no problem. This one has to be adhered in, whether with double-sided tape or some adhesive. Now, putting it in there was a massive pain. Now, you can have these shipped to you with the kit, and even if you do, I really recommend just getting the 3D print files and printing them yourself, or have a friend print them, if at all possible, and to do that in PETG. It feels like this is in PLA, and PETG is a bit more flexible, and flexibility on that part is certainly going to be a benefit to putting it in. All right, slight change of plans. I did reprint this, however, this is a modified version of the front cover. This was a STL file that was shared to me by a gentleman named Flasher in the float wheel discord and there's some modifications to this. There's some cutouts on this end. The corner on the bottom is a bit smaller and this took me all of 15 seconds to put in. It was much much easier than the included version of it. So this one is much better and I did print it in PETG so there's a little bit of flex in there. Also made it a little bit easier and there were no pinching of the wires. Very, very much improved. So I will have the link to that STL file in the article that will accompany this. So a link to that is in the description below. Just follow that through. You'll find it all there along with some photos and all that. But a big thanks to Flasher. Really appreciate the modifications done to this. Huge, huge improvement. So once again, on with the build. Here we are with another tip. Now, I don't think that this will be a concern going forward as I think it was fixed, but the motor sensor wires coming from the wiring harness from the hub motor, it's a good thing to make sure that when you're adding the extension slash converter from the RC connector to the standard sensor port that goes into the VESC, that the wires do match up. There have been some samples of this where the white and red wires are swapped and so it's just good to take a look when you plug it in that all the wire colors match up. Now just for your own reference, sensor wires are usually color coded in that the red is positive power, the black is ground or negative, the white is usually the temperature sensor, and then the blue, yellow, and green are the sensors for each different phase of the motor windings that generally correspond to the phase wires uh, coming out from the motor as well. Okay, so this is not exactly a tip, but it's something to be mindful of when you are connecting things. You have a bit of a daisy chain of power going from the Bluetooth module to the light bars in the front and the back. So the way it runs is you have the UART port running to the Bluetooth module, and the Bluetooth outputs power to the front light bar, and then that wire travels to the back to the rear light bar. And essentially it's just voltage going from one to the other to run them all in daisy chain. Now, the thing to be mindful of is that 
and you're plugging in each of these, I have noticed, and I don't know if this is the case for all kits that are going out, or if it's just mine, or if it's just an early batch thing, but the red and black wires seem to be reversed. If you look at the markings on the pins, you'll notice that whenever you see red and black, you usually have voltage, so this says five volts, and then the black is usually ground, which is negative. Red usually is positive, black is usually negative. And here it's reversed. The black wire is at the voltage or the positive pin, and the red is at the ground. This doesn't really matter for this instance because it seems to be consistent all the way through this daisy chain. So they're reversed here, they're reversed there, and it's reversed in the rear when you connect it to the rear light bar. So if you actually take a look, uh, they're marked 5 volts and ground right there, and so they seem to be consistently reversed. The 5 volts is black and the ground is red, and the same seems to be in the rear as well. So it's something just to be mindful of. So as long as those are consistent and you're sure that the pins are matching up with where they're sending power, then that's fine. It is a bit of a odd inconsistency because red is usually positive, and black is usually negative. And this is the one instance in this kit where I found that not to be the case. By the way, ignore all that stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm running a very different setup from what one would normally get if you just ordered the kit and put it together. I have my own battery, and so I have an anti-spark switch, which is what all that is. So don't worry about that. If that is something to note. Don't freak out. So long as the pins actually match up with where the wires are going, you should be fine. It is important before you do any configuring of the controller that the board is set up in a way that the motor can spin freely. You don't want anything contacting the tire because when you do your motor setup, this will spin and that could cause problems if there's any cabling or anything in the way that could get caught anywhere here. I'm getting way too comfortable over here. I do hope you all enjoyed that. Yes, it was a bit of a mishmash of clips, but when I started filming all this stuff during building, I had a very different idea of the kind of video I was going to put together, and it became clear as I was going through this entire project that I couldn't squeeze everything into one video, and so after I had shot a whole bunch of footage, I decided to not even try. And so rather than editing and leaving things out of a video that I think would help folks who are actually trying to put something like this together, I decided to toss it all together in sort of a video salad for the first installment of this series. So I do hope it was helpful to some, I do hope it was inspiring to others, and I very much hope it was entertaining to all of you. If this is the sort of thing that interests you, I will have a write-up with links and more resources and information for you in the description below on my blog. It will be a developing article that I will update as I continue to add to this series. So, if this is something you're interested in getting involved with, do check out the rest of the videos in the series, check out my article, and as always, you should be involved in the community that is making things like this happen. I appreciate your viewership, stay safe, and don't fall.